Welcome back to Low Carbon Lifestyle. If you've been following any of the videos on this channel over the last few months, you'll know that we had a heat pump installed last summer. Since the start of July, we've been getting all the heat and all the hot water that we need to be comfortable at home from the electrical connection to this white box sat in our back garden. It's pretty amazing. It's now the start of March. We're through the worst of the winter in the northeast of England. And this box has proved that it can do the job of keeping our house warm and keeping us clean through showers. I said in a previous video that we live in a mid-terrace Victorian house with some average improvements to the fabric of the house, including double glazing, a loft full of insulation, uh, a small extension at the back of the house, which was built to modern building regs. But I reckon we're a fairly average house and we've been pretty happy with a heat pump this winter. So, how has the heat pump performed? What has it cost us to keep us warm? And what have the emissions been compared to a gas boiler? My name is Tom, and this is a little series about a low car. Let's look at the winter months from the 13th of November until the 4th of March. We've needed just under 8,000 kilowatt hours of heat in this house, 7,996 to be exact. And the heat pump to give out that heat has used around 2,787 kilowatt hours of electricity. So that's a coefficient of performance. The ratio that we measure heat pump efficiency with a coefficient performance of COP of 2.84 over the winter. Some weeks over three, others going as low as 2.73, but average of 2.84. This is probably about what I might have expected, but there are other homes with a similar system that would have a much higher or, or a slightly higher efficiency. How would we get it higher? Well, well, simply by reducing the flow temperature of the radiator circuit. We currently follow a weather compensation curve within the heat pump controller so that at five degrees, the unit will produce a certain amount of heat to ensure the house is warm, but at zero degrees, it will produce a little bit more heat to make sure that the house is warm and just enough so that we don't waste energy. At 10 degrees, it will, be, it will produce less. So, so it, it follows a curve at different external temperatures. The curve that we have chosen within the depths of the heat pump controller uh, has been 0.9. This means that at five degrees, we have the radiators running at about 43 degrees. Five degrees outside, 43 degrees in the radiators. At zero degrees outside, it'd be about 46 degrees in the radiators. And if we were able to be comfortable at a lower temperature, a lower curve, then we'd, we'd improve the efficiency of the heat pump. But we know now that there are parts of the house that will probably benefit from some better insulation, some reduced, reduced drafts. So we need that level of heat at the moment at 0.9 to ensure that we are comfortable. If we manage to do some more insulating this summer, maybe the downstairs floor, maybe some wall insulation on that external wall, then we may be able to reduce the heat curve slightly for next winter. The other variable in all this is the external temperature. And as we continue to need heat over this next month or so, but the external temperature is that slightly bit higher, our efficiency will go up. So, what have our emissions been for the last three or four months? The 2,800 kilowatt hours of electricity we have used would have emitted about 600 kilograms of CO2. If we got the same heat from our old gas boiler, it would have emitted around 1.6 tonnes of CO2. So our emissions for heating over the winter have been 63% less. Bingo. Our costs for that electricity have been roughly £420 to keep us warm and showered. For the equivalent heat from a gas boiler, it would have cost us about £270. So about 50% more on our bills. And that's quite a meaningful increase. For us, it's a worthwhile decision to reduce our emissions and we're okay with that. But as our energy prices are, are changing in the next month or so, and gas is actually rising more than electricity, the costs for the same heat next year will actually only be 17% higher for the heat pump than a gas boiler. And if we can work on getting the efficiency higher, changing that heat curve, and we get it up to a, a, a coefficient performance of 3.4, which isn't out of the realm of possibility when I calculate. If we look at the whole year, and I will calculate by June what the whole year looks like. At 3.4, we would be running cheaper with a heat pump than a gas boiler. Maybe I'll do a bit of work to insulate a bit more this year. 
We've learned a lot about how the house and about how best to use the heat pump over the winter. And I'm hoping that we may have some efficiency gains as we continue to understand how to get the best out of it. And in the back of my head, I'm gonna be wondering whether we can get that heat curve down another step for this next year. We'll see. Thanks for watching this short update. Um, I'm hoping to do a video next with a thermal imaging camera and that should help me understand where we're losing heat around the house and where I should focus my attention.